Yo, listen, listen, listen. Don't get mad for what I'm about to say. I'm just trying to make a point. But Kendrick Lamar is one of the most famous, best-selling, most respected musicians alive in any genre. When he dropped a music video last week, within five days, it already had six million views. Dot, uh, we don't fuck up the world. Excuse me, but it's that your girl did mean to Central C is a 25-year-old from London without a studio album out, and he dropped a music video two days later. At the same time, his video had 10 million views. Somebody rescue me, I got too many, got too many, many, I got, they could last me the next two weeks. But before you get upset, relax. I'm not trying to say that Central C is more popular than Kendrick, but the point I'm trying to make is simple. Hip hop has been popular in the UK for almost 40 years, with the first British hip hop record label being founded in 1985. But UK hip hop has never been popular in the US. Even the most popular artists out of the UK in recent times, Dave, Stormzy, Skepta, they haven't been able to make big waves in the US past the more dedicated niche music community. And they collaborate with US rappers very rarely. But Central C might be the first UK rapper to truly make their sound mainstream in the US, because after just a few years of making music, he's already got a huge impact overseas, in a way that very few, if any, UK artists have ever done before. His style is dynamic, and I think it appeals to a lot of different listeners and sounds. But at the same time, a lot of people have issues with the way he makes music. So is Central C the first UK rapper who has a chance at becoming an international celebrity, or will he stay in the UK bubble? forever. Let's get into it. You can't build anything meaningful if you don't have an obsession with quality. That's why I've spent thousands of hours making Volksgeist videos. I've stayed up all night. I've worked on Christmas Day just to make sure everything is perfect, to make the best videos I possibly can. That's why I've never sold merch until now. Why would I put my logo on anything but the best possible product? Why would I sell products that don't represent greatness and craft? So I decided to make the best possible clothes to give people a way to support my work and actually get something in return. I'm not here to spam my Patreon. I'm not taking sponsorships from any old company. I'm not promoting affiliate codes or begging for donations. I'm just here to make good videos and create good products. I'm here to be a source of motivation and inspiration by reminding you what greatness really is, hard work and dedication. The Volksgeist t-shirt and crew neck features a silver embroidered Volksgeist logo and the word Volks embroidered underneath. Because everything I do is by the people, for the people, and it's all made with love and attention to detail. It's a reminder to take action and work hard to be the best person you possibly can. The shirts are manufactured and embroidered in the US, and they're made of 100% cotton. So if you wanna support the hard work and detail that goes into making my videos and get a piece of high quality clothing in return, you can buy a shirt or a crew neck at volksgeist.store. And of course, shipping is always free in the US. I think the best way to describe Central C's success so far is that you've either never heard of him or you think he's the next best thing since Drake. And that's kind of the problem with UK rap. If you know, you know, but if you don't, you just don't. UK rap isn't mainstream in America at all. Even though American fans of UK rap have known that UK rappers are some of the most creative artists, the best writers, and the most interesting storytellers for years. Artists like Getz, Slow Tie, Little Sims, Loyal Karner, Dave, Stormzy, so many more. These guys have made some of my favorite albums ever. But even though they're amazing storytellers with intelligent writing, complex production, nuanced ideas, UK rap has rarely, if ever, crossed over into a mainstream American audience. But again, this isn't because UK rap isn't good. UK rappers have their own styles, their own themes, and their own sounds that are just as interesting as US rappers. And a lot of my favorite albums of the last five years have been by British artists. From grime to drill to jazz rap, they're far from generic or boring. Yes, I start to think about the legacy you left. The young man who hasn't had his first breath. For a mother who can handle my stress, even more, nothing less. Put your hands on my chest and feel the beat. But it seems incredibly difficult for a UK rapper to get recognition in America outside of dedicated niche online listening fan bases. Not to say that an artist needs to be famous in America to make an impact on the world, but more sales, more shows, more tours, more streams, who wouldn't want that? The only problem is that UK rap is different. The slang, the accents, the melodies, the flows, the rhymes, all of that combines to 
make UK rap a little bit more difficult to get into for the average American. So because of that, we just haven't had a lot of crossover. And of course, it doesn't help that there are all these memes that go around about UK rappers. Oh, you know, we're gonna stab you with a knife. Americans, we shoot guns. UK rappers, they stab each other with uh, steak knives. Like, it sounds silly but that's not really what the genre actually sounds like. At the same time though, there have been some moments like Drake and Hetty One teaming up for Only You Freestyle. There was the way that in the last five or so years, Skepta built close ties with ASAP Mob and Playboy Cardi. Slow Tie has toured extensively throughout the US with great success at American venues. He's collaborated closely with Denzel Curry, but again, it feels like a niche thing. There hasn't yet been a UK rapper who becomes an icon in the US, but it seems like Central C might be the first artist to break that barrier. So how did Central C get to the level he's at now with so much potential, so much buzz, so many crazy numbers on the internet? Is he the next mega popular international rap star? Okay, so Central C is from London. He grew up in a neighborhood called Shepherd's Bush, but I know my audience and like 80% of you guys are American, maybe 5% of you are from England. So honestly, I don't need to give a whole Wikipedia bio. Uh, basically Central C comes from a rough part of London. Uh, you guys know London is a place with the same population as New York City. There are plenty of rough areas and Central C comes from a neighborhood called Shepherd's Bush, which is pretty much a rough area. There are a lot of housing projects, halfway houses, and his parents met when they were teenagers. Central was raised by a single mom with two brothers. And even though his mom had actually been raised pretty wealthy, having gone to boarding school, being uh, raised by parents with a lot of money, good income. Central C has said that his mom's parents didn't approve of his dad and they ended up kicking her out of the house over it. He's also just happens to be one of the most racially diverse people I've ever seen. He's he's half white from his mom and then his father's half Chinese and Arawak. It's just a really unique combination of genes that I don't think I've ever seen before, uh, which kind of does make him probably the most popular white rapper around right now. You know, off Jack Harlow, we got Central C now. But in a lot of interviews, Sanchez talked about how life wasn't easy when he was younger. Uh, he didn't see his father very often. He had a chaotic time at school, being raised by a single mom. He said that as a child, there was so little hope in his life that his life's dream was to one day make $10,000. That was his life goal. $10,000, shoes and clothes. And he told the Guardian that nine out of 10 people his age in his neighborhood sold drugs to make money because there was no other way to find opportunity where he was coming from in London. Essentially, has also talked about his first favorite rappers, the people who wanted to make him express himself through music. He said that J. Cole, Kendrick, and Jay-Z were his biggest inspirations early on. But his early music couldn't have possibly been more different from those influences. If you look on YouTube, it seems like he's scrubbed a lot of the old stuff that he was working on back in the day at 16, 17, 18 years old but a lot of it is still up. So looking back at these old songs, he was wildly overusing autotune, singing, trying to be this pretty boy because he didn't have a true sound yet. So looking back through YouTube, I found videos of Central C rapping as old as 2015, 2016, when he was an absolute nobody and everything about him was different back then. There are two songs I found that I thought were really funny, Line and Pull Up, and, and also the Street Heat freestyle. And it's insane how different he was back then. Pull up, skirt, would you ride for me? Tell me now, would you die for me? All these other girls wanna ride for free. I'm up so late, it becomes early and that. I'm about to break them off. I told them they can't hurt me and that. I'm wavy like the storm, so like Jersey and that. My life ain't. Everything from his voice just being being shrill and, and raspy and nasally, uh, just being a little kid with a man bun and sunglasses, it's just ridiculous. He doesn't even look or sound like the same person at all. And my honest opinion on these tracks is that it's pretty rough. It's not a good listen. The melodic autotune is way overdone. The instrumentals are like pop, Afro beat, dance hall garbage. It just sounds like a $15 YouTube beat. I don't blame the guy for wanting these videos to not be on the internet anymore. I'm glad they are so I can look at them and laugh but like yeah this is he has evolved uh he has evolved immensely since 2016 i'll say that there are lots of different stories about where central c got his narrative his attitude his look because basically his sound changed overnight at one point he just suddenly popped up as a tough guy tatted up roadman drill rapper after being a crooning auto-tune pop singer for the longest time but even aside from all the people talking online about whether or not central c is really about that life if he's really a gangster or not because he definitely didn't look like a cold-hearted drug-dealing roadman back in the day. At the same time, people have pulled up receipts of 
him in high school and he looks different and this and that. Basically, Sench put out a lot of music back in the day, with most of it being auto-tuned pop crap. And it wasn't until early 2020 that he switched up his sound and became the artist he is today. His first big breakout hit was Day in the Life. He dropped it in the summer of 2020 and it just couldn't be more different from the stuff he was making back in 2015, 2016. This is a totally different image. So you can decide if Sench's persona is faked for marketing or whatever you want, it's up to you. But the results were pretty clear because this song blew up. 75 million views on YouTube, and it immediately propelled him into the conversation in UK rap, and it sent him on a run unlike anything any other UK rapper was doing at the time. And he just kept going. He dropped Molly and Loading, and after that, Commitment Issues, all of which charted in the UK. And his first mixtape, Wild West, was released without a record label, completely independent, and it debuted at number two on the UK charts. So all of a sudden, Central C is making melodic, sample-based drill rap, and I think the whole vibe is just memorable one-liners, catchy beats, and aggressive yet personal style of writing. The biggest themes on Wild West are, you know, Sench's stories of being poor, his stories from the streets. There are a couple songs for the girls. Overall, Wild West, it isn't good kid Mad City, but it did really well at painting a picture of Central C's character as a thoughtfully ignorant rapper. Like, okay, this guy is pretty conscious. He has some real stories to tell, but he also makes fun songs, lighthearted songs that uh, can go viral at the same time. The biggest hits from here are Six for Six, Day in the Life, Commitment Issues, Loading, and those are great, but there are also some great deeper cuts like Hate It or Love It, which has a really funky atmospheric beat and some groovy flows. Hate it or love it, we're forced to grow up quick in the hood that I live in, there ain't no kidding. Love and hate a similar thing, you can hate or love me, there ain't no difference. It got hard, we made it work, I thought about winning, you thought about quitting. Signing my man told me at one time to... And Ruby has a really memorable sample and tells a dark story about the suffering and the characters that Sench grew up around as a kid in Shepherd's Bush. Ruby's as cold as ice, what she's been through in her life ain't right. Mom and dad the addicted type, she was in care by the age of five. She moved out to the Isle of Wight, she moved full time by the time she was nine. She, she don't trust no guys, they gotta get through but they keep... And yeah, this Wild West mixtape was a pretty big success. Good rapping, catchy beats, fast flows, and the music videos for Wild West went viral as well. It streamed amazingly well, and it overall gave him a ton of buzz in the UK scene. And that's all even crazier just because it was released completely independently, no label at all. A few months later, when Sench dropped Obsessed With You, it went insane on TikTok and YouTube. It was an even bigger hit than anything he dropped before, and the heavy sample of Just For Me by Pink Pantheress made it a really appealing, soft drill beat, if that makes any sense. And I think this is the song that made me a real big fan. This track hit the top five on the UK singles charts. It pulled 100 million on YouTube, all while still independent. I hope a trap boy's your type, why? Cause I don't have a nine to five. All right, I get that your standards high, but I'm not a random guy, I'm different. Literally, when I write my rhymes, you say you don't like that line, I'll switch it. Calm. You said you don't like my life, you said you don't like my. It was becoming clear that Sench really understands marketing. He was rapping these hard flows on top of melodic, upbeat samples, and he was really putting personality into all the videos. And I think that's where the Drake comparisons come from. Sench has this look that's kind of hard and street inspired. He's covered in tattoos. Uh, he's always wearing track suits, and he raps on top of drill beats, but a lot of his music feels upbeat, melodic, sing-along, poppy, and I think that's what made a lot of his tracks blow up. Obsessed With You has drill drums, but it's really basically an alternative R&B song. The lyrics are about love and romance and this and that, so the guys and the girls can enjoy it at the same time. That's why Central C gets called the next Drake, and that approach just kept working. Videos like Retail Therapy, Cold Shoulders, they all popped off and built hype for his second project, 23, which debuted at number one on the UK charts. And again, a lot of the success of this project debuting at number one on the UK charts comes from it having a hard drill sound while also feeling upbeat and fun. That doesn't mean 23 wasn't also a, a real project with deep tracks. It's a pretty big project, 15 songs, and there's a decently wide range of subjects and themes in these tracks. Again, he kind of went for this intro 
introspective yet street sound. There are drill tracks, love songs, introspective songs about family and loyalty and trust, and it comes together to make something that's nuanced and fun at the same time. And you know what? I'm just gonna say, I know a lot of people are gonna roast me. People were saying, oh, folks guys don't cover Central C, you know, he sucks. I like his writing, not in a pretentious or critical way. I just think it's good. It's personal, it's varied, I enjoy it. Cold Shoulders feels very confessional and self-aware. Airbnb and No Pain, they're in the same vein as well. A lot of the songs like Khabib, they have these epic drill sound. I don't say much, but I hear everything that I said. It don't go over my head. Success is the best revenge, no stress, I still ain't missed. <laughs> we could have got round there, put it on social media, I ruined his cred. Could've grabbed a habab, put two in his head by a But there's some variation in there with down tempo, quiet tracks where he kind of tries to express feelings that are more than just being the best rapper in London. There's some real personal writing on here. Cold Shoulder is a regretful, melancholy feeling song. They already know I can rap. The man them trap, I can do that too. I, I picked up the phone, I heard some terrible news that'll ruin your mood. They made some change and forgot their roots. I made some change and picked up the young G's, took them shopping and caught them shoes. Lil Bro is conscious yet aggressive. Lil Bro, the roads ain't for you. What do you want to be when you're older? See, I want to be a drug dealer. Go country and build a phone up. Lil Bro, you must be joking. How many men in the canton corporate? School ain't for me. I hear that, but hold it. I also like how the album isn't full of features, and it's cool that Sench can carry all these songs by himself. I wouldn't say there's even a boring track on here, maybe except Bunda, but at the same time, it's not a risky project. It's actually very safe with little to nothing that I would call experimental. Again, kind of hearkening back to that comparison of him being very similar to early Drake. But that's okay, because he's still getting established and proving himself. And I really do like 23. Overall, I think it's a pretty emotionally and sonically varied take on drill music, and it makes sense that this album did really well. For a long time, drill has been pretty niche because it's not that palatable for the average mainstream listener, but Sench's take on it makes it a lot more enjoyable for people that aren't into the drill themes, and I really like the writing because of that. I think Khabib, Cold Shoulder, Mrs. Airbnb, Obsessed With You, 8Ball, Lil Bro, End of the Beginning, they're all written really well, and I like the way the instrumentals range from aggressive to more mellow throughout the project. It makes sense that in 2022, Central C was the first UK rapper to ever achieve 1 billion Spotify streams in a single year. Since 23, Sench has put out a lot of music. He's dropped a bunch of music videos and singles, including the insanely popular Doja, which is the first ever UK rap song to get a Lyrical Lemonade video. It also ended up being one of the most popular Lyrical Lemonade videos of the last five years. How can I be homophobic? My bitch is gay. Hit man in the top, try see a man topless, even a stick is gay. Hugging my brothers and say that I love them, but I don't swing that way. The man them celebrate. Doja ran up half a billion Spotify streams and it was Sench's first song to ever chart in the US, one of the only UK rap songs to chart in the US overall. He also dropped Let Go, which was a take on the classic 2000 pop song, Let Her Go by Passenger. <laughs> You're such a hoe. I loved you until you tried to get in my head. And that's where I lost respect. You're doing the most to get my attention, baby. I'm not impressed. Uh, I changed my bed sheets, but I still smell your flesh. I don't know how we got. And Me and You is another drill style love song. You ain't gotta worry about nobody else's. Bought you a bag, now that guy's asking what I see in you. Put you on the ground, now they wanna take pics like. They wanna take trips like. No More Leaks was a quick EP with lighthearted bangers like Chapters and 1UP, and one of his biggest crossover moments in the past year came eight months ago when he popped up to do an LA Leakers freestyle, which went crazy viral because of the way he used the freestyle to introduce American listeners to different types of UK rap slang that most of us haven't heard before, and it also ended up being one of the most viewed LA Leakers freestyles ever. You say the feds just done asleep, we say the boy of them running my gaff. You say on God no cap, we say swear on your life don't gas. You say spin the block, we say jump out and slide and crash. You call it machine, we call it a mash. 
strip club in Ishik. Overall, Central C has figured out a really good marketing formula to grow his career in the last three years. He's making UK drill, but he's doing it in a way where a lot of people can enjoy it that may not even know what UK drill is. He's the first UK rapper to ever get 1 billion Spotify streams in a year. He has two really solid albums that are both thoughtful and fun at the same time. He covers a wide variety of subjects in his music. He has a lighthearted, upbeat sound that can be both conscious yet fun at the same time. And his writing is really sharp. Like he's actually a really good writer and he has just as many deep cuts as he does popular hit TikTok songs. And I can't forget to mention all that TikTok marketing. I mean, everybody knows the Doja line. So what else comes next? Because it's pretty obvious Central C is the most popular rapper out of the UK today. Now I'm not saying he's the best rapper out of the UK, but he's pretty much one of the only ones making waves here in the US, where most of the hip hop fans in the world live. One of the only things Sench hasn't done yet to continue his takeover of the rap game and make him a truly unstoppable force of marketing is making a song with an American rapper. But of course, a lot of people would say, look, a UK rapper doesn't need the approval of Americans to succeed, and that's true too. But there is a massive amount of money and attention here that UK rappers could tap into. A Drake feature, a song with Lil Baby or someone who's popular in the US, maybe something with Metro Boomin, that could truly take Central C to a whole new level. I think he has what it takes, for sure, and it would be cool to see him influence the wider rap scene with that UK sound. But it seems like, no matter what happens, he will get to the top sooner or later. He's been getting major shoutouts and cosigns from Drake, you know, he's been seen hanging out with American rappers in Europe, but even if he doesn't cross over to become the first mainstream UK rapper in America, he's already one of the most popular rappers in the UK, making a huge impact on a genre that just doesn't really need America's approval at the end of the day anyway. But ultimately, I do want to say, I think there are a lot of UK rappers that deserve just as much hype as Sench is getting. He's a great artist that makes really fun, catchy, memorable songs with pretty good writing. But at the end of the day, he's a lot more like a representation of the scene, and I wouldn't say he's the best at anything. Maybe the best at marketing or making viral hits, but you know, artists like Dave, Little Sims, Nux, Loyal Karner, there are some really good, really high level albums coming out of the UK that go mostly unnoticed by American music audiences. If you look at the albums these UK artists are making, it's kind of unbelievable how introspective and well-written and well-crafted these UK artists are. It's just a completely different vibe to American rappers. The style of writing, the word choices, the flows, the rhymes, the beats, everything is complex and fascinating to listen to. It's like a breath of fresh air. You know, I think a lot of American artists have started rehashing the same ideas and sometimes music doesn't feel exciting anymore. There are a lot of artists out there today who rely way too heavy on their producers and just don't try hard to write interesting stories anymore. And I think UK artists have the opposite problem. The lyrics are really good, but a lot of American listeners would hear something from Little Sims and say, you know, what the hell is this tea time with the queen or something? But it's like, no, if you wanna give it a chance, you'll find that these UK artists are actually amazing writers. Conflict of Interest by Getz, Sometimes I Might Be Introvert by Little Sims, We're All Alone by Dave, Alpha Place by Nux. These are incredible albums, unlike anything that's out in the US. And the UK scene overall just deserves so much more attention than it gets. I get it's easy to clown on people from England and say, oh, the accents and the, the stabbing people. But in a lot of ways, these artists can be far more creative than the complacency that we're used to in the US. So overall, if Central C becomes the first UK rapper to hit the mainstream in America, it's a good thing because he is a good artist, but it's also a good thing because him giving more exposure to that scene will introduce tons of really talented artists to the Americans as well. Anyway, I made a playlist for you guys to check out on Spotify. I included a bunch of my favorite UK rap songs. So uh, check out for that in the description if you wanna hear some stuff that I've been listening to. As always, I'm Philip. This is Volksgeist. Check out the shirt at the link below and thank you for watching. Want to support the hard work and detail that goes into making my videos and get a piece of high quality clothing in return? You can buy a shirt or a crew neck at volksgeist.store. And of course, shipping is always free in the US.